Now available in paperback and Kindle, All About Marilyn. Learn all about the struggles of a faded former teen sitcom star in this absolutely fabulous five-star screenplay. Get All About Marilyn in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com today. One of my viewers sent me a link to the upcoming BET Plus streaming sitcom, The Ms. Pat Show. And after watching this preview of the BET Plus streaming sitcom, The Ms. Pat Show, I had to shake my head. Now, the reason why I had to shake my head was because this Ms. Pat Show, which is supposed to be in the vein of the 1980s sitcom, Roseanne, comes across more like something from the 1950s failed sitcom, The Beulah Show. Now, this Ms. Pat Show is chock full of negative stereotypes that tarnish the black female image because the lead character played by comedian Patricia Williams is an obese, loud-mouthed, argumentative black woman with a bad hair weave and a bad attitude. And there's nothing really funny about this portrayal of the black woman and her black family. And this whole sitcom seems like a way for the white owners of BET to laugh at the black woman while saying that they're trying to get laughs in their sitcom. And sadly, it seems like your Patricia Williams really doesn't see the game being run on her by the people at BET who are practically perpetuating a minstrel show right in front of us with this whole Ms. Pat show, which basically breathes brand new life into old racist stereotypes about black women and perpetuates the whole image of both the Mammy and the Sapphire. Because in this Ms. Pat show, the Ms. Pat character is portrayed as a big, obese black woman with this bad hair weave, this bad attitude, this loud and foul mouth, and they all go on to show that she is the mother of children by different fathers and cannot really have a good handle on her extremely dysfunctional family. Now, these are again old racist stereotypes about the black family that your white racist would feel comfortable with, but this is not a balanced and humanized image of black people. Now, as the show's whole teaser goes on, we not only see those old racist stereotypes about black women, we also see new narratives that they're trying to push as related to black men. Now, in this show, as we've got the loud, obnoxious, weave-wearing, hair-hat-wearing, foul-mouthed Ms. Pat, we've also got her husband, her latest husband, this emasculated beta male who is sitting in the background and not really leading his family. And again, this is another negative portrayal of black manhood and black masculinity, saying that the black man cannot really lead his home and is another insult directed at the black man to make a mockery of him. Now, in addition to this portrayal of the black man not being a leader, we also have one of the sons who's portrayed as a lazy, not trying to work pookie, and then we've got a promiscuous daughter and we've got a lazy black woman Again, all old stereotypes about black people all perpetuated on a show that is supposed to be supposed black entertainment that we are supposed to pay for on a streaming service. And I don't see anything of value to spend on this Ms. Pat show, which basically makes mockery of black people so that white racists can get a laugh at our expense. Because everything that I saw in those two minutes of that whole trailer was a slap in the face to black people and took us back to the dark days of Jim Crow when shows like Amos and Andy and The Beulah Show were on the air and we were told that this was black entertainment by paternalistic white executives 
who believed that this is, was their way to passively promote so-called diversity by featuring black actors in roles, but aggressively going out here and pushing old racist stereotypes from the antebellum South that exaggerate and caricaturize the black image and make mockery of us so that we can be laughed at by a group of white racists who are getting a laugh at our expense. And when I looked at this show, this Ms. Pat show, I mean, I felt like I was back in the 1950s and even back in the 1930s. And this show really makes me understand what Mr. Superboy says about knowing your history and controlling your dollar. And as somebody who knows the history of black entertainment, I'm gonna control my dollar by not paying to see black people degraded like this because this minstrel show is just the latest in a series of minstrel shows that the mainstream media has been pushing on these streaming services. First, we had the Upshaws, which promoted black dysfunction as a social norm. And now we have this Ms. Pat show continuing to push that narrative. And I can clearly see the agenda being pushed by these shows like the Ms. Pat show and your Upshaws. This is all about creating a narrative to socially engineer the idea in black people's minds that being dysfunctional is a part of black life and it is perfectly normal to be dysfunctional like what is presented on this Ms. Pat show, which again shows you this obese, loudmouth black woman who is basically perpetuating the stereotypes of the mammy and the sapphire and is out here talking about how she's a mother with two with children by two different fathers again pushing negative stereotypes about black women that don't elevate the black woman's image and then going further to try to minimize the role of the black man and trying to emasculate the black man and the black boy and not showing us a balanced picture of a black family and showing us a working class family that loves and cares for itself. Now, when I really, as somebody who grew up in the 80s with shows like The Cosby Show, there was one scene in this Ms. Pat show that absolutely disturbed me. Now, in this Ms. Pat show, in this trailer, they show the teenage boy being a foul-mouthed little, little prick, and he sits there and curses at his mother as he tells her to leave his room. And in a so-called scene that was supposed to pay homage to Bill Cosby's scene with Theo in the first episode, what they wanted to do was show the Ms. Pat character going out here and trying to get in her son's face to check him, not understanding the context of what Mr. Cosby was presenting in that pilot episode. Now, as somebody, as a teenage, as a little, I was 11 years old when the Cosby show came on. And in that scene, I, I didn't understand what was going on with that scene until I got into my 20s. But when I finally understood what was in that scene, I understood why Bill Cosby admonished his son. Now, in this scene with Ms. Pat, they show the mother getting profane and loud to emasculate her son and getting emotional with him. And that scene was all about degrading the black boy without teaching him the lesson. Now, in the Cosby show, in that scene where Theo talks about being a so-called regular person, what Mr. Cosby was presenting in that scene was letting, that, letting Theo understand that as a black boy, you cannot be like these white kids and you cannot give, go out here and think that the world is going to be the same for you. And when he was admonishing his son, talking about, oh, I can be a regular person, as a black man in my 20s, I finally understood that scene because what Mr. Cosby was saying in that scene was, you know, th that whole idea of being regular and normal, that doesn't work in racist, white supremacist America. And that's why he was saying, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. No wonder you get D's and everything. Because he understood that in order for his son to go out here and survive in this world, and compete in a world filled with racism and white supremacy, you can't sit there thinking that 
it's going to be just like these white kids and you can be just as normal as them because they have privileges and advantages that you don't have and in order for you to survive you're going to have to step up your game and this is something that even my own mother and father taught me that I was going to have to go out here and strive for excellence so I understood what Mr. Cosby was presenting but it seems like the people who write the Ms. Pat show and your Patricia Williams they didn't really understand the context of what Mr. Cosby was presenting and they wanted to go off on this foul mouth tirade and again this foul mouth tirade again breathes brand new life into old stereotypes that white racists feel comfortable with but does not elevate our image and this is one of the most troubling things I see about this new trend of black sitcoms is that these new black sitcoms are taking are regressing the black community as related to our stories and our experiences and they're taking us back to stories and images that make your white racist feel comfortable and when I look at again shows like the Upshaws I look at shows like Power I look at shows like um even your empire and your scandal it's taking us back to a dark period where we're not seeing balanced humanized images of black people and this is bad for our children because if our kids are sitting up watching these kind of shows instead of us seeing black excellence like what i grew up with in the 80s with the cosby show with shows like family matters with shows like Sister Sister and Smart Guy and movies like House Party, movies like um, Hollywood Shuffle and movies that like Do the Right Thing and many others. I mean, I grew up in a golden age of black entertainment and that's what shaped me and inspired me at 17 years old back in 1991 and 92 when I was 18 to start focusing on creating positive stories about the black experience and creating stories that would show the diversity of black life and almost 30 plus years later that's what I dedicate myself to on the SJS direct imprint and I know we can go out here and make a better program and I know myself I can make a better program than this Ms. Pat minstrel show and I have written a comedy that would blow the doors off this Ms. Pat show. I have two seasons of a script series of scripts called All About Nikki, the fabulous first season and second season on Amazon.com right now, and it would blow the doors off what they call comedy at BET Plus that's supposed to be black entertainment but makes mockery of black people because in my show, All About Nikki, it focuses on your Nikki Desmond who is a black girl who from Beverly Hills and it focuses on showing how she's dealing with struggles as she's trying to deal with trying to restart start her life over after being expelled from a private school and living with her father and I can get laughs without breathing brand new life into old stereotypes on black women with with all about Nikki and in that series I show you a slim attractive young black girl from Beverly Hills and I show you how somebody who is a black girl who is wealthy lives I mean she wears Chanel suits she drives a Mercedes convertible and I show you images of a successful black man in her father who was inspired by actor Dondra T. Whitfield one of the best comedy men in the game and the whole series is similar to The Fresh Prince and Clueless and I got I got lots of laughs with that sitcom I wrote from people all over the world and in 2011 I mean people loved that series and I go out here and I can make a balanced humanized image of a black girl but it seems like Hollywood can't go out here and make the same kind of story instead what they want to do is go out here and push these old stereotypes because they don't want black children to get inspired like the children of my generation got when Bill Cosby came out with the Cosby show 
and showed us a different part of black life. And as I have grown up over the years, I have seen much a larger picture of black life than what people try to do on shows like BET Plus's, um, what is it? It's the Ms. Pat show or the Upshaws. I have seen a richer, larger picture of black life and the black experience. And that's why I go out of my way to write about those black experiences like I did with the sitcom All About Nikki, like I did with the screenplay All About Marilyn, and like what I am did with the books of the Spinsterella trilogy. I mean, I have seen so many different aspects of black life. And what really troubles me about this Ms. Pat show is that instead of giving us a richer picture of the black experience and showing us that larger picture of black life, they keep taking us back to the ghetto and that just shows how they want to program the black mind. They only want you to see the ghetto and the streets and the hood and they only want you to see the poor black people. They don't want you to see the black people all over in the black community because when I went out here and I was writing my novel Spellbound about the Matilda Crowley character who is a black girl who was in, going into the goth subculture, I showed not only the inner city, but I showed you that there was a black middle class in Harlem and I showed you that there were different aspects of, of that so-called ghetto neighborhood of Harlem that we haven't even scratched the surface on. So when I was writing Spellbound, I talked about not only the projects and saying, oh, there's poor people, but there were also working class people that I showed in Spellbound and, and showing that there were kids who were ready to go to college. There were kids who were in, middle who were in the middle class living on Sugar Hill. And there was a whole lot of black life that doesn't, that's not even explored by your mainstream media. They don't even scratch the surface as related to the black experience. And they don't really even show you the full picture in, of the black community in balance. All they want to do is show you the parts that the white supremacist feels comfortable with. And all they want to do is show you the black people that make white people feel comfortable about their place in the world and feeling that they won't be able to have any black person go out here and compete against them. But there is a larger picture out here of the black experience and you have to go out here and seek it out from independent black publishers like myself on the SJS Direct imprint because when I go out here and I write stories, I can write about other aspects of black life other than the streets and the hood or the single mothers or the big fat obese black woman. No, I can go out here and I can write those stories about African American goths. I can write those stories about your black businesses like I did in A Recipe for Success. I can write those stories about your African-American fantasy, like I did with the ISIS series and the East Team series and books like The Temptation of John Haynes. And I can write those stories about rich black people like I did with All About Nikki, about a black girl in Beverly Hills. And my critical question to your Hollywood types on these streaming services is, why don't you come to a guy like me to write you a sitcom? Why don't you come to me to write some material because you're going to get a richer and broader picture. But I know the answer to that question and it's the same answer that Mr. Cosby probably got many years ago. They don't want these young black kids out here getting inspired like a lot of girls were getting when I when I sent out all about Nikki back in 2011. I mean, I had one sister come to me and say she wanted to play the Nikki Desmond character and they don't want people's perceptions of black people changing like I, like many people do when they read my books all over the world because I have people in Europe and Africa and all countries all over the world when they read an SJS Direct book, their perception changes and they start to become fans of characters like a Nikki Desmond, like a John Haynes, like an Isis or an Easteam, and they like seeing those different aspects and different experiences. I mean, even the Matilda Crowley character, people like seeing the, all of that diversity as related to the black community, but your Hollywood and your mainstream media, they don't want you to see those different black experiences and see 
that larger black community. No, they want to keep you pigeonholed in a world where all you see are poor ghetto folks because they want to keep your black person mentally poor and they want to keep them in a psychological ghetto where all they see are the streets, all they see is the hood, and all they see are loud, overbearing, weave-wearing, foul-mouthed black women, emasculated, effeminized black men, and your dysfunctional black family not showing you the healthy black families I have seen over the years and the successful black people I have interacted with over the years. They don't want you to see those kind of stories, but I continue to put them out there. And the reason why I continue to put them out there is because they are having an impact and it's, it's a slow process, but I still keep persevering and pushing because as long as they keep pushing out dysfunctional media like this um, Ms. Pat show, which is just a repackaged Beulah show, I understand why it's important for work like the SJS Direct imprint to be out here because this Ms. Pat show is nothing more than a repackaged Mammy, a repackaged Sapphire, and an all new way on a so-called black channel to continue perpetuating old black stereotypes that further degrade the black image and further make black young black children socially engineered to believe that they can't be anything except somebody who is at the bottom. And we can do better than the Ms. Pat show. We can do better than the Upshaws. We can do better than Power. We can do better than Empire. We can do better than Scandal. And I'm the guy who says, yes, we can do better than this. And that's why I put my fingers to keyboard to make content like you're all about Nikki's, you're all about Maryland's, your Temptations of John Haynes, your ISIS series, your E-Steam series, your Spellbounds. I want to show you a larger, richer, more diverse world of black people, a larger, richer world of a black experience, and a larger, more richer picture of black culture. And the only way I can do that is with your support. And that's why I'm asking everybody to go out here and pick up those books on the SJS Direct imprint because once you open your eyes and see that richer world you're not going to want to even touch some minstrel show like the Ms. Pat show. Now if you want to see me make more books that feature positive images of black people and more videos like this you can donate to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to pick up again all of those titles I mentioned in this video on the SJS Direct imprint, excuse me, you can find them all on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a dark shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller.